Hello, I am Father Bob Vular. I'm the administrator of Hampton Richland Grouping of St. Catherine of Sweden and St. Richard. I pray that this message find you healthy and well. I wanted to take the opportunity to bring to you this virtual parish assembly about the merger process for our grouping. The purpose of this virtual parish assembly is to ensure that all parishioners understand what is happening, why it is happening, how it will happen, and what will happen next regarding the merger. In this presentation, you will also hear from Dr. Lisa Ferentz, a member of our pastoral council, Mary Jordan, our pastoral associate, and Father Chris Manorino, our parochial vicar. And so let's begin, as we should always begin, with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father of mercy, during this time of transition, help us to grow in unity as the combined parishes of St. Catherine of Sweden and St. Richard. Grant us the wisdom and willingness to understand how our parishes will become stronger and more vibrant in fulfilling the mission of the Church. Assist us in opening our arms to welcome others as we continue to journey on mission for the Church alive. Help us, O Lord, to trust in the future you have planned for us. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For more than five years now, our diocese and our parish community has been on a journey of transformation. Transformation takes time. It takes patience and kindness. The process is not always smooth or easy. It requires many hands and countless hours of prayerful work. And in order to succeed, transformation must be rooted in faith. Scripture offers multiple examples of how God has transformed individuals, giving them new identities, changing the trajectory of their lives forever, and bestowing upon them new names. God made a covenant with Abram and renamed him Abraham, the father of many nations. Jacob received God's blessing and became Israel. Jesus changed Simon's name to Peter, the rock, upon which our church was built. Saul, the destroyer of the church, became the great Apostle Paul. In each case, the change reflected God's vision for their new purpose in life, a different destiny, a greater role in fulfilling his divine plan for our future. As a parish family and as members of the greater diocesan community, our journey of transformation also must be rooted in faith. Faith and trust in Christ and his vision for our parish family so that we may become the disciples he needs us to be. Trusting our Lord can help remove the sense of loss or sadness experienced with change. It can instill in us an invigorated sense of hope and energy for building a new future. It grants us tenderness to replace judgment and resistance with patience and generosity of heart. Trusting our Lord gives us the courage to open our hearts to change as we create a new beginning for our faith-filled community. Let's explore some of the many compelling reasons for bringing together St. Catherine of Sweden and St. Richard. On October 15, 2018, our parish grouping of St. Catherine of Sweden and St. Richard was established by our diocese with the hope that together we would build relationships with each other, share our resources, join together our ministries, and work toward the official merger and creation of a new parish. Both churches share many common attributes and goals. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we strive to strengthen our parish families through spiritual devotion, faith formation, celebration of the sacraments, and faithful service to meet the needs of communities near and far. By coming together under one unifying parish, we can have a greater impact on our faith community and further extend the kingdom of God to others. We can accomplish more by creating synergies among our common and complementary ministries and by fulfilling our mission as disciples of Christ and members of his one body with a common vision and purpose. It is important to understand the distinction between a parish and a church. Understanding this distinction explains why we need a new parish name. 
A parish is a territory or a geographic region with people and priests. Once merged, our grouping will comprise all the territories of St. Catherine of Sweden and St. Richard. For this reason, we need a broader parish name to represent both of our church buildings and its combined regions. Churches are sacred buildings designated for divine worship. Our grouping has two sacred buildings, which will retain their names as St. Catherine of Sweden and St. Richard Church. On January 4th, 2021, St. Catherine of Sweden and St. Richard will merge into one new parish and become one new entity. The overall scope of our territory is relatively small. We are very fortunate that our church buildings are in close proximity. The two buildings are only four miles apart with an approximate travel time of eight and a half minutes. And now I'll turn this presentation over to Dr. Ferentz who will provide some information about the on-mission process, some important milestones, and upcoming dates in our timeline. Hello, my name is Lisa Ferentz and I am a member of Pastoral Council. I am going to present a brief summary of the circumstances that have brought us to this point, outline the steps that we have taken to date in the on-mission process, and then present an overview of the timeline for the remainder of the merger process. We thought it would be helpful to first review some of the trends that our diocese has been experiencing over the last several years. These downward trends have brought the need for imminent change to the forefront. The current number of active priests in the diocese stands at 178 as of July 13th of this year. Out of the 178, 24 retired priests over the age of 70 are still working on assignment. Another 18 priests work in non-parish related function, such as administrative work in the diocese, in seminary, or in institutional care, such as hospitals or nursing homes. Currently, we have 102 deacons, including four who are retired. While the number of newly ordained priests has remained relatively steady at three to five per year, this number will not be enough to offset the anticipated number of retirements expected to occur as priests reach the retirement age of 70. Currently, 28 priests are eligible to retire within the next year. 43 can retire within five years, and another 67 can retire within 10 years. As you can see, the number of active priests within the diocese may continue to decline, while the demand to serve the 55 parish groupings within six counties will remain a challenge. On a more hopeful note, there are 23 men in formation at St. Paul Seminary at this time, including 14 first-year candidates. Please keep these men in your prayers. If you remember, the on-mission process began in 2015 with Bishop Zubik calling for a year of prayer and initiating an assessment of the status and challenges affecting all the parishes in the diocese. In September 2016, each parish hosted town hall-like meetings to present the findings of this assessment and to gather feedback from parishioners. That prompted an 18-month extensive exploration of the feasibility of bringing together parishes into specific groupings. In April 2018, the bishop announced the final grouping of parishes and a study was conducted to evaluate the adjustments to the mass schedule. Then in October 15, 2018, new clergy assignments began and the interim mass schedule went into effect. Here are some important dates regarding the remainder of the timeline until we officially merge on January 4th, 2021. From this point until September 13th, we would like to gather your feedback and answer any questions that you may have about the content of this virtual assembly, as well as obtain your input on the proposed parish names. Father Chris will talk more about this last point towards the end of this presentation. We have until October 9th to send the diocese all of the necessary documents needed to complete the merger process. Then on the 19th, the bishop will meet with the priest council to discuss all of the mergers happening this January 2021. Bishop Zubik will announce and issue the decree for our new parish at the end of November 2020. 
Our new parish, with its official new name, will begin on January 4th, 2021. Our first Mass as a new parish will occur that following weekend on January 9th and 10th. Now Mary Jordan will present an overview of our groupings as it stands today. Hello, I am Mary Jordan and I am the Pastoral Associate. I will be presenting an overview of our grouping, a type of snapshot of who we are as a grouping today. I will cover some demographic information, a synopsis of our many ministries, and some key points about our finances. Total membership for our grouping of St. Catherine of Sweden and St. Richard is almost 11,000. Our average mass attendance in 2019 came in at 23% which is slightly lower in comparison with the average attendance in our diocese overall. An important takeaway from this slide is that our grouping celebrates many more baptisms than funerals. This points to the fact that we are a fairly young parish community. This next slide further indicates that our grouping has many young families. Our largest age group includes individuals in the 35 to 54 year age range. These are often the parents of our second largest age group, those who are 5 to 17 years old. It is equally important to note that our third largest group is individuals over the age of 65. This is important information to keep in mind as we move forward in the decision-making process for our merged parish. While this slide is not an exhaustive list of all of our ministries, it does present the scope and diversities of our many programs. One of our major goals will be to explore ways to combine similar ministries so that we leverage the strengths of each group and use our resources more efficiently. This practical application will help us to achieve our main goal as a parish, which is to build up and energize disciples for Jesus Christ while serving our brothers and sisters in his love, near and far. The next few slides will present the following financial information operating income and expenses, assets, cash, savings, etc., liabilities, debt, and payables. At the time of the merger, the new parish acquires the assets and liabilities of the former parishes. Over the last several years, offertory collections have been declining at both parishes. This table shows a 13% decline for the most recent fiscal year. While we did have an increase in parish share collections, total income for our grouping still decreased by more than $100,000. Overall, our expenses were about the same as last year. As a result, our surplus declined from $132,000 to just under $50,000. Fortunately, during this past year, we received $240,000 as part of the one-time U.S. Fiscal Stimulus Package. Obviously, this is not an amount that we can expect to receive again. Therefore, the surplus number of nearly 50,000 represents a more realistic picture of our current financial state. It is important to note that this surplus amount does not account for debt repayment or much-needed capital improvement expenditures. Looking at our assets of June 30th, 2020, We had balances in our savings and checking accounts totaling just over $562,000. We also had $88,427 in capital improvement savings, and lastly, the balance in our campaign for the Church Alive was $579,906. This brings our total assets to $1.23 million. On the liability side, as of June 30th, 2020, We owed $22,030 in insurance and a balance of $151,521 for our 2020 parish share assessment. Our mortgage debt is a little less from when this table was populated. That balance currently stands at $577,000. Now Father Chris Manorino will provide an overview of where we are going from here and outline our next steps in this merger process. Hello, I'm Father Chris Manorino, parochial vicar here at St. Catherine of Sweden and St. Richard. In this final part of the presentation, I'll be providing you with an overview of some upcoming changes and some important next steps where we will need your help 
and input. This slide shows our current staffing levels. Six positions are shared between St. Catherine of Sweden and St. Richard. However, at this time, the majority of the positions primarily serve just one or the other church building. The next slide will show the process we will undertake to assess future staffing needs and changes. At this time, we are evaluating our current staffing levels and needs. Starting in September, we will begin to post any new positions and start the process of vetting applications and interviewing candidates. This process will continue for most of the fall. No new hires or realignment of staff will take place until January of 2021. Here are some important updates for our grouping. Both of our church buildings will stay open for the foreseeable future. There are no plans to close either building. Shortly after January of 2021, we will begin the process of establishing new pastoral and finance councils. We will bring together similar ministries for greater impact and more efficient use of resources. Finally, we will have finalized the process of having a new overarching parish name while keeping the names of our buildings as St. Catherine of Sweden Church and St. Richard Church. So let's talk about this last point. First, let's recap some of the steps we have taken to date in coming up with a new parish name. On June 20th, we invited all registered parishioners to submit suggestions for a new parish name. We received 311 responses. The Advisory Council members and clergy team analyzed these suggestions and created from them a list of 15 names for review by the bishop. These names had to meet very specific criteria in order to be considered. Bishop Zubik has approved 13 possible names. These names are Mary Undoer of Knots, Our Lady of the Visitation, St. Andre Bisset, St. Bridget, St. Emma, St. Faustina, St. Francis de Sales, St. Gianna Mola, St. Josephine Bequita, St. Jude, St. Kateri, Saints Martha and Mary, and St. Timothy. We encourage you to please read the rationales and to visit our parish website for additional biographic information regarding these holy men and women. We now need to reduce this list of 13 names to five for final consideration by the bishop. And here is where we need your help. Now that you have had a chance to view this virtual assembly, we would greatly appreciate hearing from you. Please visit our website and click on the box labeled Virtual Parish Assembly Questions and Input on Names. Select the survey. We have put the link for this survey on this slide. Share with us your thoughts and any questions that you may have about the information presented in this assembly. We also need your input on the possible parish names. We will be responding to your questions in the bulletin and on our web page, and we will use your input to reduce the number of proposed parish names to five. These five names will be sent to the bishop for final consideration. The deadline for the survey is September 13th. We remain deeply grateful to you for your involvement and commitment in strengthening our faith-filled community and bringing together our parish families. We thank you for taking the time to watch this virtual assembly and for your participation in this process of transformation. May the Lord continue to send abundant blessings upon you and your loved ones. Let us conclude with a closing prayer. May Almighty God bless you. May he send his angels and saints to minister to you, walk with you, and lift you up. May the Holy Spirit fill you with his light and Our Lady enfold you in the protection of her mantle. May you be placed in the center of Jesus' most sacred heart. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.